Welcome everyone to the Apprenticeship to Salford City College College Leaver Digital Information Event. Um, thank you for those who have joined us at 3 p.m. on the dot. Uh, delighted that you can be with us. Um, we're just going to give it another two or three minutes. Um, we're expecting another 10 to 15 attendees to join uh, the event. So um, again, thank you for those who are on time. Uh, delighted to have you with us. We're just going to give it two or three more minutes and we will start the event. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Apprenticeships at Salford City College uh, College Leaver Digital Information Event. Delighted that you could join us for this um, session. Just wanted to run through the presentation team for today. So myself, uh, I'm Alan Milne, and I'm Head of Apprenticeships at Salford City College, and delighted to be with you uh, for the next 30 or 40 minutes while we, we give you some really valuable information uh, about apprenticeships moving forward. Um, I'm also joined by my colleague Mandy Shepherd, who is our recruitment and business development team leader, who you'll be hearing from in a short while. And also um, joined by Sarah Allen, who's one of Mandy's team, apprentice and employer advisor, who some of you may already have met or spoken to over recent weeks. And I'm also absolutely delighted to welcome two colleagues from Kellogg's, Emma and Gabrielle. Um, as you're going to find out, critical, critical to any apprenticeship is employers. Uh, and we um, we like to think that we work with some fantastic employers at Stalford City College, none more so than Kellogg's. And you're going to hear from colleagues, Emma and Gabrielle from Kellogg's, to talk you through their commitment to apprenticeships and also talk you through um, some real current apprenticeship vacancies that they are recruiting to. Okay, no, just introducing the plan and agenda for today. Um, so first and foremost, I want everyone to understand exactly what apprenticeships are and also understand the benefits of being an apprentice. Um, crucially, I want you also to understand the range of apprentice apprenticeships that we offer at Salford City College. Um, and then as introduced, um, every apprentice has an employer. So we're going to look at some of the employers that we work with at Salford City College and obviously going to give Kellogg's the opportunity to talk to you about their perception of apprenticeships, why are they so important to their business and as I said, introduce you to some current vacancies that they're trying to recruit to. Um, and then I'm going to introduce you to Mandy and the recruitment team um, who are going to talk to you about how you become uh, a Salford City College apprentice. Then finally, just going to explore a couple of other options, um, potentially, if we can't get the apprenticeship that you're looking for immediately. Um, should take around 30 or 40 minutes. Um, one thing that we're really keen for you to do is to ask questions. Um, I always say that these events, this is about you making a really informed decision about your career, about your future. 
Um, no question is a silly question. Um, so what we want you to do, um, the instructions are on the screen. We want you to use the chat function to ask as many questions as you want. Um, we did this event a couple of weeks ago for school leavers and we had um, an unprecedented amount of questions and it was great to be able to answer them. So please do feel free to ask any questions in chat. Um, one of the team will probably answer those questions fairly instantly and in chat. But I will also try to pick the questions up as we're going along. Um, and also we will conclude by running through some of the questions that our people have asked. Um, so everyone gets to hear the response and everyone gets to find out at the detail. I think that's really important. So please don't be scared uh, to ask, ask any questions. Okay, look, um, I genuinely believe there's never been a better time to be an apprentice. Um, it's something that we're incredibly proud of at Salford City College. We've grown our apprenticeship provision significantly over the last five or six years. We now have around 1300 apprentices on program at any one time. Now, obviously, we've all heard that there is uh, economic challenges because of COVID um, and, and that, that, that undoubtedly will, will put pressure on employers. But the, um, the importance of apprenticeships to employers in recent years has grown and grown and grown. There's now a national commitment um, from employers of all sizes to recruit apprentices uh, in a huge range of different programmes. So I genuinely believe that there's never been a better time to be an apprentice. And I think you've made a very wise choice in terms of joining this event to find out how you could potentially become an apprentice with Salford City College. Just going to show you um, a video we put together just to demonstrate the types and range of apprentices that we deliver, um, not from our mouth, but obviously from the mouth of the apprentices themselves. It's very rewarding because I get to see the children's first things that they do, like first steps and the first words. Day to day, I'm responsible for overseeing all the operations in this locality. Every uh, construction contract is uh, is different. We um, we work on some quite challenging schemes. Um, it's great to walk onto a, a greenfield site or a site that um, that's been used before and then completely transform it. My job role includes general admin duties. I also weekly input timesheets and do the banking every week. <laughs> OK, so hopefully that short video montage displayed to you the types of apprenticeships that we support at Salford City College. Um, that, that video was edited deliberately to show that all apprentices, first and foremost, are employees. So all of those apprentices, the three or four apprentices you saw in that video montage, first and foremost, employees doing a really valuable job for their employer. Uh, and then obviously their apprenticeship runs alongside um, their, their, their time with their employer. So it, it was deliberately done so to show you that they're all really valuable employees to that organisation. Just wanted to give you a quick insight into apprenticeships at Salford City College. Obviously, most of you will be very familiar with Salford City College as a group. You are all college leavers. Uh, the vast majority of you have studied um, with us at Salford City College at one of our campuses, um, one of our organisations. Um, you will all know, hopefully know, that we're one of the best colleges uh, in the UK. We had an Ofsted visit um, in 2019, November. Ofsted are obviously the government organisation who inspect quality of education organisations. And Ofsted said we were a good to outstanding organisation. We have a large range of staff, 650 approximately, a huge range of delivery experts across a wide range of expertise. Uh, hopefully you all recognise that we've got five strong campuses across the city of Salford, from our sixth form site to Pendleton and Eccles, to our uh, Future Skills base, to our City Skills campus, um, and, and our, our centre at Worsley as well. So we've got some fantastic venues and locations where we deliver education 
to the people of Salford and, and Greater Manchester and beyond. Um, we're very fortunate that we've also got an apprenticeship headquarters on Salford Keys, um, which doubles up as a kind of business space, but also a delivery space as well. So we've got a fabulous resource at the Keys where we work out of. And we support around about 11,000 learners annually um, from entry level to level six, all sorts of different programmes, different types of qualifications. And, and we're very, very proud of being a fantastic educational organisation. Um, apprenticeships at Salford City College are obviously one of the key arms of, of the organisation. Um, we believe we've got an outstanding apprenticeship function. Um, our success rates this year are on target to be between 75 and 80 percent which is against a national average of around 65%. Um, our employer satisfaction rates are the highest in Greater Manchester of any college. Um, they're consistently very high. Um, all the feedback from employers we're very, very proud of. Um, as I said previously, we have around about 1,300 apprentices um, across seven different sectors on around 65 different apprenticeship programmes. So we've got real large breadth of apprenticeship provision, expertise, uh, and I'm incredibly fortunate that I do employ, we do employ some of the best apprenticeship delivery staff and support staff, I believe, in, in the United Kingdom. We have a fabulous team of apprenticeship experts who deliver real depth of, of knowledge and excellent delivery across a broad range of, of, of subjects. Uh, and we work with, at the moment, around about 470 different employer organisations. So 470, 470 employers employ a Salford City College or more, one or more, and around 94 of those um, are large apprenticeship organisations similar to Kellogg's, who you're going to hear from in a short while. Um, so we're incredibly proud of our apprenticeship provision. Um, we've got a really passionate set of staff and they're all very, very determined to support um, young people like yourselves in developing careers, skills, uh, so you've got the skills you need to support yourself moving forward. Um, so I'm just going to talk you through some of the basics of, of what it is to be an apprentice. Um, some people may know this, some people may not, but it's always important that we kind of cover uh, the basics of, of what it is to become and to be uh, an apprentice. So obviously, as I've alluded to, first and foremost, every apprenticeship and every apprentice is employed by their host employer. Um, now that could be a large global organisation like Kellogg's, or it could be a small Salford based organisation with two or three employees. Um, but every single apprentice is supported and is employed by um, their host employer. And ideally, we expect that employer to play a significant role in the apprenticeship journey of their apprentice. Um, Mandy and her team do an awful lot of work with employers to ensure that they offer the best apprenticeships, they offer the best support, and they understand fully what it is to take on and support an apprentice in their apprenticeship journey. Um, obviously, if you're employed, then absolutely it means you are getting paid. Uh, and that is obviously one of the huge benefits of being an apprentice. That old line, you are absolutely earning while you are learning. Um, all apprentices must be paid, uh, obviously, remuneration based on their sector, on their type of apprenticeship programme. There are minimum levels. Um, the minimum level of any apprenticeship pay is £4.15 per hour. Um, but I would say 70 to 80 percent of our apprentices earn above that and some of them earn significantly above that. A lot of it does depend on obviously the sector that you work in as an apprentice, um, the, the year of study. So a lot of apprentices go through uh, career earning rises as they develop through their apprenticeship program. Um, but obviously we have that conversation uh, with all employees to make sure that remuneration packages are appropriate and hopefully uh, really attractive to you as apprentices moving forward. Um, obviously, as we've alluded to, um, an apprenticeship is about earning, uh, earning while you're learning. So learning is a critical element of every apprenticeship programme. Every programme we offer is designed um, by employers associated with the Institute for Apprenticeships. Um, so they're all designed by employers, uh, for employers, so to so the right. Some include significant qualifications, that you need to come into college for, and we're going to look at that in a bit more detail shortly. Um, but all, all apprentices will work towards um, a, a, an approved government apprenticeship standard uh, and will study towards their relevant sector expertise, competencies during that programme. And finally, another common question is, where do I learn? Obviously, some of you guys are college leavers 
from Salford City College, so you will be familiar with one or more of our centres. Some of you may not. Um, around about 60% of our apprentices attend college on a regular basis. Um, some come on day release, um, which means they're in college um, once a week. Some come in maybe once every month, uh, and some come in on a block release programme, so it may, may mean that they're in for a week every six to eight weeks. Um, but that means around about 40% of our apprentices actually never attend college. Um, and the reason for that is because um, the majority of our apprenticeship delivery staff actually work remotely. So they come to you to deliver your learning in your workplace uh, because that is best suited to the career or the sector that you are working in. Um, so an awful lot of our apprentices never see a college building, but they see our um, staff on a very regular basis and they also see our virtual learning environments, so our digital space where they learn on a regular basis as well. So some of you, if you do uh, move into apprenticeships, will come back to college to attend. Um, others will only um, be supported in the workplace and will utilise our virtual learning environment. Just quickly going to now talk through the breadth of apprenticeship provision that we offer as an organisation. Um, as I said previously, we do deliver around about 65 different apprenticeship standards um, and, and over a range of different sectors. So obviously the, the uh, one you can see on the screen at the moment is probably one of our biggest areas, business professional and financial services. Um, we've got around maybe 350, 400 apprentices in this area, all doing different range of programmes. Some are kind of accounts and finance related, some in credit, um, project management, business administration, which I'll come back to, um, digital marketing, leadership and management, uh, a, a huge range of different programmes um, in, in, in that area that, that we offer. And what we'll say is that, and we will see this through some of the vacancies that we, that we show um, later on, is that a lot of employers in this sector choose to recruit apprentices as um, business administration apprentices. Um, now, for some people, um, that may not sound um, that attractive, but actually, I, I believe they're probably some of the most attractive apprenticeships you can undertake, because really what it means is that an organisation is looking to recruit you into their company to start you as an administrator, but then obviously they want to develop you into specific roles, specific sectors. A lot of our administrators go into marketing functions and the HR functions, into management functions, etc., finance, uh, credit, etc. So there, there, are, there are often a wide range of administration roles available for apprentices and nearly all of the time they will lead to career growth and career ladder climb uh, into other specialist areas. Uh, and indeed, two the, the uh, two apprentices you can see on the screen, um, they, were our they were two of our first 10 apprentices, Ashley and Courtney. Um, Ashley actually still works for Salford City College. So he started as uh, a business administration apprentice with us and he now works as a digital lead uh, for, for us in our kind of learning resource team. Uh, so he's obviously significantly enhanced his career uh, using business administration as a foundation. And Courtney, who you can see, no longer works for us. She now works for uh, Aldi as, and she's now HR uh, team leader. So she used her um, business administration apprenticeship with us to move on to kind of bigger and better things and she's recently completed a, a degree level qualification as well. So two great examples of using a business administration um, apprenticeship to uh, start a career with organisations and really climb career ladders with the great foundations that you receive. Just moving on, so obviously um, we are now well known. We, we, we've got a kind of regional um, rec re reputation in construction and the built environment. Again, we have around about 250, 300 apprentices in construction and the built environment. Um, building services, um, craft construction, and also increasingly professional construction. So kind of building survey, technician, engineering technician, site supervisory, etc. Uh, and we work with probably around 100 different construction companies uh, at, at any one time. Uh, and as we move closer to September, that is the, the kind of traditional construction recruitment season. So I hope that a lot of companies will be recruiting apprentices uh, moving forward. Fantastic opportunity. Again, um, especially in kind of construction and, and engineering, an awful lot of uh, organisations are looking for young professional staff. So young, young ambitious um, 
potential kind of site managers, site foreman, engineering managers. Um, it's an aging workforce. It's it's got huge uh, skills needs. A lot of people are leaving these sectors because of uh, re retirement, etc. So there's a huge drive um, for kind of professional construction apprenticeships in particular, um, which is suited to kind of college leavers like yourself. And um, we have around about 120 of those apprentices at, at any one time. Um, education and early years, obviously, particular um, strength of ours, given that we're a, we're a huge, large education organisation. Um, and that ranges from working with a number of kind of nurseries across South, uh, Salford and Greater Manchester, with kind of children, young people's uh, families, managers, early years educators. Uh, also work with schools around kind of teaching assistance and kind of learning and development practitioners. So again, great entry into education, a great way to establish um, core skills that will act as a foundation to grow and enhance a career in education. And we're really proud to work with some fantastic educational uh, and, and, and kind of young kind of nursery establishments across Greater Manchester. Um, probably our biggest area is um, health and social care. Probably um, obviously three or four apprenticeships in it, but we have huge numbers of apprentices on adult care. We are the preferred apprenticeship provider into Manchester City Council, Wigan Council, Trafford Council, Salford Council, um, and a number of others. So we have huge amounts of apprenticeships who are, who are working in kind of um, settings, care settings across Greater Manchester. Uh, and it's a really proud area to work in at the moment. We've got a huge amount of our apprentices kind of on the front line as care workers, supporting uh, obviously individuals who uh, either had COVID or, or, uh, or recovered from COVID or are trying to keep as far away from COVID as possible. And we've got a huge number of apprentices working incredibly hard to support their employers in, in those organisations at, at, at the moment, which is fantastic. Another area, um, some of you who may have studied at our Worsley campus will have seen our kind of fine dining restaurant on the Glass House at Worsley. We have a fantastic hospitality and retail and uh, hair and beauty provision out of Worsley. And obviously we work with a number of, of um, hair and beauty establishments and catering establishments across Greater Manchester. Um, the sector has been hit uh, by COVID, uh, but it's one that we really hope will bounce back uh, very quickly uh, because it's a fabulous sector to work in and there's some great employers who are really passionate about developing uh, young talent to kind of really drive forward their businesses. Okay, doke. Um, so I've just talked you through um, the range of provision that we offer. Um, but what I didn't do, I didn't go into any particular detail about any of the apprenticeship standards because as I alluded to, we do offer 65 different programs. But I appreciate that some of you on the event will want to know very particular detail about very particular apprenticeship standards. So what I'm now going to show you is a, is a 57 second clip which will show you exactly where to go on our website to find out that information about the apprenticeship standards that you, you are looking at. I'm just going to play you now another uh, short clip to show you exactly where to go to find out the information that you need. So as you can see, we've got an apprenticeship section on our website. Very simply find the apprenticeship program section. You will then see a range of sectors, just drop down menu. Obviously scroll through the and find the apprenticeship standards that are of interest to you. You will then obviously see um, some strong detail about the program, how it's delivered, what you will learn, where you could potentially go following the program and how it's delivered and also the endpoint assessment. So every apprenticeship concludes with an endpoint assessment. And then obviously if you do want to apply for any of those particular standards, um, then you can do that through the website as well, as you were seeing. Um, but we felt that it was really important that we showed you that area of our website um, because there are um, a lot of you who want very particular detail on very particular apprenticeship standards. So again, just in summary, uh, www.salfordac.uk, cc.ac.uk, apprenticeship tab, being apprentice, our apprenticeship programs, select the sector that you're interested in, then select the apprenticeship program you'd like to study, 
then you will see a huge range of information um, which will hopefully help you make decisions on, on your future moving forward. Okay, doke. Um, so as I've alluded to, um, every apprentice is employed and we are incredibly proud of some of the employers that we work with. Um, we, we, we work incredibly hard to develop relationships with the best employers because we believe they give uh, our apprentices the best opportunity both on their apprenticeships and moving forward. Uh, and as, I'm, as I alluded to in the introduction, delighted that we've been joined by colleagues from Kellogg's. Uh, and I'm now going to hand over to them to run through their thoughts and information on um, why maybe you should become an apprentice. So Gabrielle and Emma, over to you. No problem. Uh, can you hear me OK? Yeah, cool. Um, so hi, I'm Emma Smart and I'm uh, the UK Field Sales Training Lead. So I suppose just come on to talk, give a bit of an introduction as to why we value apprenticeships uh, at Kellogg's, but also give you a little bit of insight. So my colleague Gabrielle's going to kind of also then take over and kind of give a bit more insight into our specific apprenticeship. So I think Echoing Alan's point, an apprenticeship offers you the chance to obtain some real world experience to develop your skills and knowledge of the chosen area that you obviously opt into. And it's key for us at Kellogg's to attract talent into our business, um, providing you with that on the job experience, but also the opportunity to gain that qualification and learn more about our organisation. So it enables us to develop an individual to have the skills relevant to our organisation. Next slide, please. Um, so I think it's really important um, you're thinking about, you know, you've got to decide what to do after finishing your studies. And, and that is a big decision. So you might be asking yourself, do I enter the world of work with an apprenticeship? Maybe should I go to university? And I think really kind of choosing what your next move is requires that careful consideration. So I think doing an apprenticeship, you'll gain valuable on the job experience, but also, as Alan says, earning money while you learn. You'll be um, able to kind of look at this as a bit of an alternative to university and really have that more practical approach to your learning. And you'll focus on training for a specific career, learn your trade by actually doing the job. So really getting that hands on experience and having the opportunity to apply your skills immediately. Um, and I really think kind of, you know, when you're thinking about the difference between university and apprenticeship, you've got to consider your own individual kind of preferences as well in the way that you want to learn. So we kind of talk about apprenticeships at Kellogg's being really getting on the job um, experience. Next slide, please. So again, this kind of just kind of looks at the different options that you might be thinking about right now in terms of your next steps. But I think, you know, if you have ambitions to work for a particular company, um, it might be helpful to find out what they look for in a candidate, which what do they value most? What are the qualifications experience that they're looking for? And that might help you make the decision that's right for you. It's a tough choice to make and one option isn't necessarily better than the other, but it's about taking a look at your current situation, considering what qualifications that you already hold, what you'd like to study, your finances, because obviously you can earn money while you learn doing an apprenticeship and also what you'd like to do in the future. So really think about doing some research and choosing the best option for yourself. So just next slide, I think this echoes like the, the thread really of it, but they're a great way of gaining work experience and a nationally recognised qualification whilst also earning a wage. So it effectively is free for you as an apprentice as you don't have to spend any money on the qualification that otherwise may cost quite a bit of money going down other routes such as university or night school. So I'm going to press over to uh, my colleague Gabrielle for the next slide, please.
Hi everyone, I'm Gabrielle and I work in the employee relations team in the HR department at Kellogg's. So apprenticeships isn't my day to day job, but something that I'm really passionate about, which led me to have a team look into launching this commercial apprenticeship at our Media City office this September. Can you just go on to the next slide, please? So I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, uh, will have heard of Kellogg's before. We're a huge brand with presence across the world and we do have a huge history in Manchester too. All of our strategies and values revolve around our people. They are the heart and soul of what we do. And I think anyone that works for Kellogg's would agree with that. We've never had an apprenticeship programme at our Media City office, even though we do have a very long standing apprenticeship programme at our Manchester plant, which has actually been going for 63 years now. So we've got tough competition at making ours the best, but I am hoping that ours will be successful in years to come. So our marketing and sales functions are the biggest teams at our office in Media City. So we thought they were the best place for our apprentices to start because they'll really benefit from a strong network of people able to support them on their journey. This is a really unique opportunity to be involved in some amazing activities across our business. Our sales team is what keeps our cereals and snacks on the shelves and you will play a huge part in making that happen during your time with us. Next slide, please. So this is just a little insight into our presence across Europe. So we've got at least field sales and office or a manufacturing facility in almost every country across Europe. So working for Kellogg's brings a world of opportunity and that's not just in different functions and departments, but also in different countries and locations. So we're known for being a career for life. So at Kellogg's, people start their career with us and they're often there until retirement as they're working their way through the different teams, functions and obviously sometimes locations. And even if you choose not to explore another location with us during your career, you work and you meet with people every day from across Europe and across the world, which brings so many different perspectives and cultures together. It can really build your skill set. Next slide, please. So more about our apprenticeship and what we'll be offering. So as I said earlier, it is really a unique opportunity in the fact that we're going to let you choose your apprenticeship pathway. So we want to empower you to choose your career. Once you complete your first 12 months with us, you will gain a business admin level three through Salford City College. And it's at that point that we will then give you the choice whether you'd like to pursue an apprenticeship career in sales or marketing, both of which will give you a level four apprenticeship. During your first 12 months, you'll work in sales and supply, which will give you an opportunity to see how all of the different teams within sales and beyond work together. You will, of course, also have some exposure to our marketing team as you'll be involved in campaigns and initiatives for us to sell more products. And as Emma mentioned earlier, this is the perfect way to earn while you learn. You will be treated as employee from day one, from your salary and your benefits, right down to supporting your additional development outside of your day-to-day -day responsibilities. I was now just about to play a short video, um, but we've had some technical problems. Um, so if you can just go on to the next slide. So this was Charlotte, who is one of our sales team, who's only been with us a short time. Um, she's actually been with us less than three years, um, but so far has had three different roles in three different functions across two different locations. So I think that just goes to show she's gained so much experience in various roles and she's only been with us for three years. So we really do support people moving for their own development as well as helpful for us in the business. I also love on this slide that Charlotte gives the advice of never being afraid to ask questions because it's exactly how you'll learn, especially as an apprentice. And it's certainly how I think you can make a good impression in gaining that knowledge. If you just move to the next slide, please. So you'll see there that we've now been awarded the most reputable company in the UK for 2020. So that's not just for, for food, but for any company in the UK, which I think is something amazing to say for a brand that you work for. Um, and as um, Alan mentioned before, we are offering a very competitive salary for these um, apprenticeships that we have, and we are paying above um, the national wage for apprenticeships. So if you want to know anything else about the apprenticeship that we're offering, or you've got any questions about what Emma and I have presented, then please get in touch with us because we'd absolutely love to hear from you. Okay, um, 
well, how do I apply? Wow, what an opportunity. Um, absolutely delighted uh, Emma and Gabriella could join us from Kellogg's because um, obviously we, we can talk as an educational organisation about um, the benefits of being an apprentice in terms of career potential and career opportunities. But actually, for those on the event to hear that directly from yourself makes it very real. And I thought made it made it kind of really, really powerful. And I, I thought that was a kind of fantastic interpretation of the benefits of being an apprentice, right from um, the kind of breadth of different types of careers within Kellogg's um, to the different places with which Kellogg operate right across the globe. Um, and, and, and again, just showing the power of potential that um, apprenticeships can, can afford individuals and, and their careers uh, moving forward. So delighted that you could join us and hopefully you'll, you'll stay online um, in case we've got some questions that come up moving forward and be kind of delighted for, for you to help explore them. I'm just going to cover a couple of questions now. I think we've had some questions in, in the chat. So um, first question we had is when can we start an apprenticeship? Um, so hopefully you want to start an apprenticeship with Kellogg's. Um, and, and the answer to that is at any point really. Um, unlike college attendance, which is very traditional, based on kind of September enrolment in the main, uh, apprenticeships start all year round. So um, I always say when we've got, we've got 1300 apprentices approximately, because that number changes every day, because we start apprentices every day, um, depending on when employees want them to start their business. And also we complete apprenticeships every day, because obviously if you start a two year program today, then you're gonna finish it uh, in, in July, 2022. So um, you start an apprentice based on an employer's demand and you conclude the apprenticeship again aligned to that. So it doesn't follow a traditional college uh, calendar in the main, in the main. Some traditional programs, maybe like construction, do tend to follow a bit more of an of a academic calendar. Um, next question, after doing an apprenticeship for a year or two, what do you do after you've got your qualifications? Can you stay at the apprenticeship as your job? Um, well, obviously, um, as you've heard from Kellogg's, Companies like Kellogg's um, passionately need new talent in their organisation. They want to make an investment in, apprentice, in apprentices and apprenticeships so those people will stay in their career, as Gabrielle alluded to, potentially uh, for life. Uh, re retiring um, with Kellogg's is obviously the, the ideal intention. That doesn't always happen, but we do hope that the majority of our apprentices remain with their employers. And around about 96% of our um, apprentices who complete their apprenticeship programme do remain with their employer. And an awful lot of them do progress to high level apprenticeship programmes or high level employment opportunities, which again is, is fantastic. Um, thank you for Mandy for answering those in, in the chat as well. Um, I think we've got a specific question around childcare. Uh, we do offer a broad range of childcare provision. Um, yeah, you wanted that one, Mandy. Um, Okay, so I'm going to come back to the remaining questions as we come to an end. I think there is one for Kellogg's. I know someone who works for Kellogg's. He was taken on as a factory engineer. Do you still take on engineering apprentices, Gabrielle or Emma? I've just answered that one. In oh, the sorry, chat. sorry. Yeah, so it is something that um, we do still offer, um, but we just take these on as and when throughout the year. So any vacancies for that will be posted on the Kellogg's career website. Thank you. Great question. And as Gabrielle alluded to, I think that that apprenticeship program dates back 63 years, which is a fantastic tradition for any um, employer uh, to have that. So as you can see on the presentation screen, you can also see a range of other employers that we work with. As I alluded to, we, we do work with around 470 to 90 uh, different um, employees at any one time. Again, that changes because every day, we work with new apprentices and new employers, so it does fluctuate. Uh, but around about 480, 90 different employers. And we're really proud to work with some of the biggest and best uh, companies who are based in Salford, the Northwest, etc. We have particular expertise uh, in local authorities, so Salford City Council with their preferred um, apprenticeship provider. We have around about 60 apprenticeships, apprentices with Manchester City Council, as well as working for a number of huge other uh, global organisations, M Brown Group, uh, Jackie Moore uh, Retail, etc. Motion Group, they're a huge organisation in Salford who work in engineering recruitment across the globe uh, and so on and so forth. So we do work with a huge range of different types uh, of, of employers 
and often that is based on the kind of sector but um, obviously it also just depends on the need of those businesses do they need skill and talent in their organizations um, and we spend an awful lot of time through mandy and louise in the in the, in the recruitment team uh, engaging with employers and then we obviously run relevant checks uh, and, and we do relevant due diligence to make sure those employers we believe will give uh, our apprentices the best opportunities possible. Okay, I'm just going to talk you through um, some real vacancies that we've got at the moment, just to give you some examples. Obviously, you've heard from Kellogg's, those vacancies are live, and we're very proud to be working with Kellogg's on that programme. And hopefully, some of you guys on, on the call will be applying for those in, in the near future. But again, just to give you some other examples, um, as we talk about business administration, and again, as the guys from Kelly alluded to, great platform to develop a career. Uh, and this, um, these opportunities with Phillips Trust is a great example of that. If you look at that salary, a £12,000 per year starting salary, um, which is, which is uh, a great, great uh, starting foundation for a young apprentice. Uh, level two or level three to be determined, but a great opportunity nonetheless. Um, this is one if anyone's interested in a career in kind of building services. Um, so a large number, uh, as I said, of our apprentices are construction related. Um, Charleston Building Services, they, they recruit annually with us. Um, Heat and Vents, so that's industrial plumbing. So plumbing in factories and hospitals, in office blocks, um, big boilers, big systems. Um, we call it kind of heating and ventilation. Uh, and, and again, they pay well above the, the, the national minimum wage for apprenticeships. So a great opportunity that's live at the moment. Um, Salford City Academy, as I alluded to, we do an awful lot of work in the education sector. Um, the Academy are looking for an administrator at the moment, but again, great potential to work for a large education organisation with career opportunity and, and potential. Um, another um, gas engineering apprenticeship, again, the employer is not wanted to be named in the recruitment process, um, but again, a great opportunity with a real uh, apprenticeship moving forward. Uh, adult care, as I alluded to earlier, we do deliver a huge amount of apprenticeship provision into the adult care sector, and it's really a, a growing sector as, as um, the, the money is invested quite rightly in, into that area. Um, often looking for 18 plus in terms of age, so I know we'll see all of you leaving uh, school, uh, leaving college, sorry. So a, again, a great opportunity to develop a career in, in, in a fantastic sector working for Harmony Home Care, one of our uh, traditional employers. Uh, and, and finally, just another um, great program that we're involved in. So this is the co-op, uh, obviously a, a real kind of strong brand. Uh, majority of people know the co-op either from kind of retail or from finance or other, uh, other, other uh, areas of, of business. Uh, they're looking to recruit in the very near future um, 10 customer service uh, apprenticeship positions. Uh, the recruitment's not yet open. I think we're expected to be open in August, um, but some great opportunities with a really, really attractive uh, starting salary um, for the right candidates. So again, just to show you the breadth of, of provision and apprenticeships available. And again, exactly as um, Kellogg's have alluded to, uh, all of the employers that, that I've mentioned who are recruiting now, they don't just want apprentices for a couple of years. They want apprentices to be talent in their business for the for the future. They need young apprenticeship uh, apprentices to become their future skill, their future workforce, and we'll treat them uh, as employees from day one and, and look after them really well. So um, obviously we, we've we've shown you some great vacancies. Um, how, how do we make it happen? Um, Going to pass over now to um, Mandy and Sarah. As I alluded to, Mandy's our recruitment team leader. So spends her life along with her team trying to find fantastic opportunities uh, for young people of Salford to, to match them up and put them into kind of their dream careers. So I'm going to hand over to you, Mandy, now just to talk us through um, the team and also how to get that dream apprenticeship. Thank you. Hi, everybody. So I'm Mandy Shepherd, um, and as Alan mentioned, I'm the team leader on the um, recruitment business development team. Um, as you can see on the screen, this is our um, our team who works around the clock, passionate about helping people into apprenticeships. Um, and how we do this is um, one side we business develop. So um, a couple of team members go out to employers, as Alan has mentioned, 
um, and business development is that we could be one day on a nursery in a nursery, one day on a construction site, one day in an office, and we collate vacancies um, for young people to obviously apply to. Um, and on the second hand, then we have to, we recruit to them vacancies with a vision to recruit the, the best talent um, for our employers. Um, and we do this through um, our apprenticeship advisors who kind of spin all the plates um, and will be in touch with you to create you a CV, give you advice and guidance. And um, for some, some don't know what their career is, uh, whereas others know their chosen career. And um, we help you with every step of the way. We'll create you a CV, interview support, um, and then put you forward for our, our employers. Um, we work as a recruitment team. Um, and obviously our aim is to get you into an apprenticeship as soon as possible. Um, we, we, um, some of you may have seen us around the college centres because we do come around the college centres. So today's all about students. Um, so if you are and you're already working with the team, then obviously continue what you're doing. Um, you will be receiving our vacancies already. For those that haven't um, yet, met, yet met the team and this is your first time, you know, knowing about apprenticeships and welcome. Um, and if you're serious about becoming an apprentice, then please answer your phone, answer your emails and work with the team. Like I say, we're passionate about placing people into an apprentice apprenticeship. Um, I'm going to hand you over to Sarah Rowland because it, it would be one of our apprenticeship, apprenticeship advisors that you would be speaking to probably after the event. So um, I didn't want to confuse and obviously not know who the apprenticeship ad advisors are. So I'm going to pass you over to Sarah Rowland to discuss the next steps after today and how we recruit. Um, if possible, and good luck to everybody. Hi everyone, um, I'm Sarah Allen, as Mandy said, part of the recruitment team here at Salford City College Apprenticeships. Um, so, to register for apprenticeships, I'm assuming some of you might already be registered with us, you might have had emails from myself or from my colleague Abby. If you're already registered, then fantastic, we've got a step through the front door already. If you're not registered, you need to take a note of the email address apprenticeships at salfordcc.ac.uk. If you go onto our website, again, all the details are on there. You can contact us via the website or you can contact us via our email address. If you don't have a CV yet, please don't worry about it. That's what the recruitment team are here for. We can support you by sending you some CV templates or we can support you by doing a CV over the phone. Don't let that put you off contacting us. It might be the only thing that's stopping you getting your apprenticeship and that's what we're here for to support you with. Um, so yeah, if you're not registered already, contact us. Let us know what you're interested in. Even if you're not too sure what you're interested in, get in touch with us. We'll give you a bit of careers advice. We'll discuss our current options. We'll discuss your current skills and how they link to some of the apprenticeships that we've got on offer. We're really, really looking forward to working with all the college leavers this year to support them on their career journey and good luck. If you do need to call us, you can get us on 0161 631 5555. Brilliant. Thank you, Sarah and, and Mandy. And, and, and generally, they are the best of the best. Um, if there's uh, an opportunity or three that you want to discuss, then those guys will do the very best to help you achieve your career aspirations. Now, as we come to the end of this event, um, I do just want to talk about a couple of other options for um, anyone on, on the line. Um, as we've alluded to, um, apprenticeships are absolutely about employment. Um, and, and obviously, an employer has to make the decision to uh, give you the opportunity to become a, an apprentice. And sometimes that doesn't happen overnight. Um, it, we do sometimes find that a talent wants want to wait for their, their uh, apprenticeship of, of, that they're looking for, or employers may not have opportunities at this moment in time or various other reasons. And obviously, particularly, it would be wrong of us not to kind of mention the current predicament that we're in around COVID, and that has slowed things down a little, um, although there's a huge ambition from government and a huge ambition we're finding from business across Greater Manchester, from organisations like college, to really continue giving young people opportunities. Uh, don't forget, those businesses need young talent in their business. They did before COVID and they will after COVID. It just might slow things down a little. So what we have done, we've introduced um, a new programme called Targeted Traineeships. Um, a, a traineeship is about developing people for apprenticeship programmes. Um, and the, they are an innovative programme where the, um, the trainee has actually received an employment offer from an apprentice employer. 
But because of COVID, the employer is not ready yet economically to, to be able to pay the apprentice immediately and may want two or three months just to kind of get themselves and their business in order before they can actually physically take on uh, that apprentice. So a, a target traineeship is where the employer's made a commitment to you and then we, we put you on a, a kind of formal traineeship programme. So you work with us, but you also work with the employer, maybe on work experience. Uh, you're mentored by that organisation. And it's a great way for you to cement your position with that employer who, through their commitment, is going to take you on as soon as possible. Um, so if you want to find out a little bit more about that, again, just discuss that with Mandy, Sarah and the team. It's a great way just to kind of um, become an apprentice a little bit further down the line when those opportunities are definitely available. But also, and, and you guys will know this more than ever, um, we encourage you to look at your options and consider your options. Um, we particularly have a, have a strong university centre at Salford City College. So if we can get that dream apprenticeship for you now, obviously we can certainly offer you hopefully that, that, that uh, higher education position at our university centre, or we can look at some of our other provision, our other centres, um, if, if there are other courses. Obviously, ideally, if you want to become an apprentice now, we will do all we can to give you those opportunities uh, and Mandy and the team work will work incredibly hard but we absolutely want you to remain uh, active and remain involved. So we do have other provisions such as the targeted traineeships or our other college areas of, of study if, if we can't get you that apprenticeship um, immediately. Okay, look, so I'm going to conclude there. I'm now going to quickly recap on any of the questions that I've missed uh, in the chat, um, just, just so we all get the, the answers that we need. Um, and and hopefully if you haven't answered asked any questions yet and you would like to now is your chance before we kind of conclude in two or three minutes so I'm, I'm up to the question how, how can I apply to a childcare apprenticeship for September uh, hopefully Sarah and Mandy just answered that question either go through our website or email the guys uh, and they will be in touch and, and I know we, we're always looking for um, childcare practitioners there was always educational organizations across Salford and Greater Manchester who are really keen for young people to enter into their organisation so that they will be delighted uh, for you to be, approach them. Um, next question, hi, I would like to know if you have any network engineering or data analyst apprenticeships. Unfortunately, um, those are areas of apprenticeships that we don't offer, um, but we will recommend you some other apprenticeship providers um, after this, where, where we would re recommend you go on and find those uh, apprenticeship opportunities. We do have uh, at our um, uh, Future Skills um, Centre some, some fantastic digital uh, programmes. You, you may be one of those students, but we don't offer, unfortunately, apprenticeships in those areas at the moment, as, as Louise has alluded to in the chat. Um, is it better to have some experience before going into your chosen apprenticeship? That's a fantastic question. Uh, and I'm actually going to hand over to Kellogg's, if you wouldn't mind, Gabriella, Emma, picking that question up. From an employer's perspective, are you looking for experience? I think, sorry, can you hear me before I yeah. continue? Yeah, <laughs> um, I think for us, um, and what we certainly put in our booklet and sort of the advert that we've gone out with is um, it's really not about experience for us. Um, it's about the right attitude and the willingness to learn. Um, we don't expect people to have extensive work experience, especially not obviously at the age you are becoming an apprentice. Um, and I think certainly we provide the experience and as long as you're committed to learning and you're committed to your qualification, then I don't ever see why experience should stop you or a lack of experience would stop you. Brilliant. Thank, absolutely fantastic, Gabrielle. And, and if I could have given that answer myself, that's the exact answer that, that I would have given um, from my experience of, of 15, 20 years in the apprenticeship sector. Um, majority of employers who come to us when they say, when we ask, what are you looking for? They never say experience. They always say attitude, determination, uh, hard work and tenacity uh, because the employer will give you experience, will give you skills and knowledge. But if you haven't got the right attitude and the right determination to make it work, then, then, then you're going to struggle. So, Gabrielle, that was a perfect answer from, uh, from our perspective. So thank you for that. I'm just going to, Tom, can we just bring Mandy back into um, the, the uh, chat, please? 
Am I back in? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it was only, sorry, one of the things that myself and Sarah missed. Just for, um, there might be people that's quite anxious about knowing that the college centres are closed at the moment because you've obviously been a student. And um, just to confirm, we are doing remote um, appointments. So we can do a digital appointment like this or a telephone call, email. Um, don't be don't be concerned that the centres are closed and, and, you know, wondering when your appointment can be because it will be as of now, as of tomorrow. So, thank you. OK, thank you, Mandy. And obviously, that's a, that's a really important message in the current climate. Um, it, it's always a hard time of year for us in, in the apprenticeship team because obviously we, we work with uh, six colleges across Salford. They're a part of our group, they're our colleagues. But an awful lot of those colleagues will, as of next week, be on holiday for the summer. Um, in the apprenticeship sector, we don't stop. We have apprentices in work all year round. So like most people in, 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 the, in the world of business and commerce, we, we work continuously. And as Mandy's alluded to, Mandy and her team will be working incredibly hard over the summer months to try and uh, fix you guys up with, with great opportunities and apprenticeship. And I know one of the questions, if I call the team, will I get an apprenticeship in September? We can never guarantee anyone an apprenticeship. Um, and the reason why I always say that is because obviously an apprenticeship can only be offered by an employer. But what I will guarantee is that we will work incredibly hard with you to find you a fantastic apprenticeship opportunity as long as you work incredibly hard with us to display those attitudes and that determination that our employers are looking for. We can't guarantee them, but we will work incredibly hard to find you that apprenticeship that, that you want. Okay, doc, I'm just going to look through um, what kind of document do you need to apply for apprenticeships such as CV or personal statements and how do I get help with them documents? Well, again, I think we've covered that in the chat. Um, as, as Mandy and Sarah have alluded to, they, they spend their they're working days supporting uh, people into apprenticeships, helping to produce CVs, helping to produce written documents, written statements. Every employer recruits in a different way. Um, no one recruitment process is the same and, and we will adapt our support to suit the employers who we are representing. Um, but we will do all we can to make sure you've got the kind of basics of a, a strong CV, a strong application form. Then obviously as we get you towards interview, we'll help you with interview preparation and, and also any, any other thing in terms of logistics to get you to your interviews, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so thank you for that question. And I think um, unless there is any more questions that come in now, I'm going to um, draw the event to a close. Um, I just again like to thank uh, Gabrielle and Emma from Kellogg's. Um, it's, it's absolutely brilliant that you could join us and, and it's a real kind of credit to uh, your organisation and the, the programme that you're offering. I, I believe that's a fantastic opportunity for hopefully two Salford City College graduates to move into the world of business and commerce uh, with Kellogg's and, and obviously as you've shown a fabulous organisation with an incredibly strong reputation and could potentially offer a great career uh, for, for two of our uh, graduates moving forward so it would be fantastic if, if we can get those applications. So delighted you could join us and we look forward to working with you on, on, on those programmes. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to thank all of those in attendance. Um, this is only the second ever digital event that we've undertaken. Um, we normally do these in person. Um, so hopefully you've enjoyed the event. You've asked a number of questions, which is fantastic. And um, we look forward to working with you to help you progress into your uh, dream apprenticeship and to help you establish the career you're looking for moving forward. Just a quick thank you to Tom and our marketing colleagues for um, producing this, this event. Okay, thank you and good luck with your future decisions and career aspirations. Thanks everyone.